you will be 11, 14, and 15. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I made these and I don't remember yeah. which one it was. 11. Okay. By the, rivers of, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we re remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required us of us a song, and they who wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Fellow citizens, above your national tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wails of millions whose chains, heavy and grievous, yesterday, are today rendered more intolerable by the jubilee shouts that reach them. If I do forget, if I do not faithfully remember those bleeding children of sorrow this day, may my right hand forget her cunning, and may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. To forget them, to pass lightly over their wrongs, and to chime in with the popular theme, would be treason most scandalous and shocking, and would make me a reproach before God and the world. My subject then, fellow citizens, is American slavery. I shall see this day and its popular characteristics from the slave's point of view. Standing there, identified with the American bondman, making his wrongs mine, I do not hesitate to declare with all my soul that the character and conduct of this nation never looked blacker to me than this 4th of July. Whether we turn to the declarations of the past or to the professions of the present, the conduct of the nation seems equally hideous and revolting. America is false to the past, false to the present, and solemnly binds herself to be false to the future. Standing with God and the crushed and bleeding slave on this occasion, I will, in the name of humanity which is outrage, in the name of liberty which is fettered, in the name of the Constitution and the Bible which are disregarded and trampled upon, dare to call in question and to denounce with all the emphasis I can command, everything that serves to perpetuate slavery, the great sin and shame of America. I will not equivocate, equivocate, I will not excuse. I will use the severest language I can command, and yet not one word shall escape me that any man whose judgment is not blinded by prejudice, or who is at, not at heart a slaveholder, shall not confess to be right and just. Okay. Uh, 14. 14. Testing. Testing. What am I to argue that it is wrong to make men brutes, to rob them of their liberty, to work them without wages, to to keep them ignorant of their relations to their fellow men, to beat them with sticks, to flay their flesh with a lash, to load their limbs with irons, to hunt them with dogs, to sell them at an auction, to sunder their families, to knock out their teeth, to bum their flesh, to starve them into obedience and submission into, to, to their masters? Must I argue that a system thus marked with, with blood and stained with pollution is wrong? No, I will not. I have better employments for my time and strength than such arguments would imply. What then remains to be argued? Is it that slavery is not divine? That God did not establish it? That our, do our doctors of divinity are mistaken? There is blasphemy in the thought. That which is inhuman cannot be divine. Why, who can reason on such a proposition? Then they that can, may, I cannot. The time for such argument is past. At that a time like this, scorching irony and convincing and not convincing argument is needed. Oh, had I the ability, and could I reach the nation's ear, I would today pour out a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not the light that is needed, light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed, and its crimes against God 
and man must be proclaimed and denounced. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year, the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty an unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciations of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Go where you may, search where you will, roam through all the monarchies and despotisms of the old world, travel through South America, search out every abuse, and when you have found the last, lay your facts by the side of the everyday practices of this nation, and you will say with me that, for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without a rival. Take the American slave trade, which we are told by the papers it is now prosperous just now. Ex-Senator Benton tells us that the price of men was never higher than now. He mentions the fact to show that slavery is in no danger. This trade is one of the peculiarities of American institutions. It is carried on in all the large towns and cities in one half of this confederacy, and millions are pocketed every year by dealers in this horrid traffic. In several states, this trade is a chief source of wealth. It is called, in contradiction to the foreign slave trade, the internal slave trade. It is probably called so too, in order to divert from it the horror with which the foreign slave trade is contemplated. That trade has long been since denounced by this government as piracy. It has been denounced with burning words from the high places of the nation as an execrable, tra execrable traffic. To arrest it, to put an end to it, this nation keeps a squadron at immense cost on the coast of Africa. Everywhere in this country, it is safe to speak of this foreign slave trade as an inhuman traffic, opposed alike to the laws of God and of man. The duty to extirpate and destroy it is admitted even by our doctors of divinity. In order to put an end to it, some of these last have consented that their colored brethren, nominally free, should leave this country and establish themselves on the western coast of Africa. It is, however, a notable fact that while so much execration is poured out by Americans upon those engaged in foreign slave trade, the men engaged in the slave trade between the states pass without condemnation and their business is deemed honorable. 